Hey there everybody, Jason from CNC Labs here with another short little tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to surface your spoil board flatter than a pancake, flatter than a tire on a gravel road, flatter than a map of camp, flatter than a squirrel on the highway, flatter than a doormat in a busy house, flatter than a singer without auto-tune. We have a lot of new customers coming in that have never touched a CNC before and we've seen some uh, little issues popping up that we kind of want to address. I'm going to show you the way that I go about surfacing the machine. Uh, it's not the only way to do it, but it's the way that works for me and I hope this will work for you as well. All right, so we're at our machine and there's a couple of things that we want to get set up in G-Sender uh, before we get started. It's going to make our lives a lot easier and it's going to reduce the amount of alarms that we're going to get because we want to get our bit to machine as much material of our spoil board as possible. Uh, so the, one of the first things that we will do is we'll click the config tool and under homing and limits, we're just going to scroll down a little bit and we're gonna disable both the soft and the hard limits. The reason we want to do that is because we don't want to trigger any alarms and we want to make sure that we can get to the full extent. Soft limits have a buffer in them that don't allow you to go the full extent and we want maximum travel. Now that we've got our settings changed, we are going to go back into our main screen and the very first thing that we want to do, home your machine. Now that the machine's home, we want to have an understanding about how wide of a surface that we can make. My technique, and it may not be the, the only one out there, I, in fact, I know it's not. My technique to figure out my maximum distance, the numbers that I'm gonna need later on in this, uh, when we start our um, file, is that I'm gonna jog the machine all the way to the front. I'm gonna lower it down, because I wanna see where I can get my machine surface to and I'm over all the way as far as possible. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zero out and I'm gonna zero out the X, I'm gonna zero out the Y. At this time, I'm not gonna worry about the Z because I don't know how far I can get my machine to cut and do my spoil board. So once I've got them zeroed out, I'm going to jog my machine all the way over to the right as far as it will go. And now you can see that I'm at the center line of my bit and it's at the end of my uh, spoil board here. I'm looking for the maximum distance from the center line of the spindle of my bit to the center line of the spindle. That way I know that I can get as maximum travel as possible. This will be determined by the size of your bit. We have a 22 millimeter here. You may have something larger, one and a half, even two inches. Now that I've gone all the way to the right, I'm gonna go all the way to the back. That's as far as I can go. So right now, what it is displaying in here is my maximum extent that I'm gonna input into the surfacing tool. So record these two numbers down. For me, it's 49.3 and 25.5 inches. In the next step, when we get into the surfacing tool, these are the two numbers that we're gonna input. So follow along. Now we're gonna get into the surfacing tool. Uh, it's located under tools and under XY surfacing. I'm gonna start my machine at the front left corner. I'm gonna do a raster cut. It means it's just gonna go back and forth, side to side. I had written these down previously, and so my maximum extents were 49.3, and we're gonna do 25.5. Here's something that kind of trips up a lot of people, your cut depth and your, what we call it, in our max. So those are two different settings. The cut depth is the pass it's going to make, and the max is how the final depth that you want to go. They can be the same if, you're, if your board or material is not too skewed, or if you have to go deeper, you can do it in multiple passes. So every pass I want it to do, right now it's saying I want it to do it at 0.04 uh, of an inch. And my board's a little warped, so I'm going to make sure to surface everything. I'm going to do 0.08. So now what that means is that it's going to do two passes, 0.04 uh, of an inch. For my bit depth, right now it's in Imperial at 0.866. It 
that's roughly 22 millimeters, so I'm okay there. Make sure to choose your bit diameter for that space. I'm gonna run it at 40%. This is a really good starting point. You don't wanna to cut too much material off using your bit, otherwise you can bog down the machine, you can stop it, you can get a halt, you'll get an alarm. It's annoying, don't do it. Always start with about 40%, that's a good uh, reference. And then I'm gonna speed mine up a little bit. Uh, right now it's close to 100 inches a minute, but for me, I'm a bit of a cowboy. I like to run it a little bit faster, so I'm gonna run it at 130 inches a minute. And I'm gonna run my machine at probably about 19, not uh, 20,000. You can find all these numbers or your own starting points in uh, our feeds and speech charts that we have online. We'll link it down below. Uh, but these are the settings that I've used in the past, so I know they work, uh, and I'm comfortable with these settings. So if you're not comfortable, Use our feeds and speeds chart. That's gonna get you started in the right path. Next, we're just gonna generate our G code. I see this appearing in here. And so I'm just gonna load some main visualizer. Now that we got it on our visualizer, I need to go back to the start. And so I'm gonna move it over. I'm just gonna hit go X and go Y. For this purpose, when you're surfacing, get rid of this thing. You don't need it. You've already got it zeroed out, but you do need to know where to start. So top tip, just do the feel method. It doesn't matter, you're gonna scrape all this stuff away. Throw it into precise, lower your bit down, give it a spin, and as soon as it hits, that's it, you're done. You can zero out. For this demonstration, I'm not gonna be cutting the, the board. So what I'm gonna do is just to show it, I'm gonna raise it up and then I'm gonna zero at the bit. I want you to see it moving, but today I'm not gonna bother cutting. Big issue here. I wanna talk about the dust shoe. Because we're down so low, a lot of people are gonna be putting this dust shoe on. What's gonna happen is because you're gonna hit the sides over here, unless you got this raised up so the plastic part is over top of the uh, rails, it's gonna crash, you're gonna cry, I'm gonna get a phone call, just get rid of it. You don't need it for here. For the time it takes for this thing to surface your board, you can just hang out here with your favorite beverage and the shop vac and it's all done. Is it gonna work? Now, what I recommend doing is that um, you can do what I've done where I raise the Z up and set the zero so that it's gonna cut above the surface. This is a great way to test to make sure that it's gonna run the full uh, surface that you want to do. You can also hit the outline button. For this purpose, I'm just gonna hit start. It's gonna do an initial pass, it's gonna go around. It's gonna machine, I do a couple of passes and it will lower into the table and then start cutting. Now that I saw that it made the full circuit, the pass, I'm very confident that it's gonna do the surfacing pass back and forth. At this point, I'm confident to say that I can zero to the surface board like I previously showed you, and then start your job. Let that run a little bit. Come in here with the shop back, try to keep the dust down, and then Bob's your uncle. That's the top tip that we got for today on how to surface your machine. Always remember, Turn off the hard and soft limits. That's the first thing I would do, just to make sure you don't have any alarms. Always home your machine first. Next, you're gonna zero the machine uh, where you want it to start. Move the machine over to the extents and record that number. Input the number into the uh, surfacing tool. Go back to zero, set your Z, and then you can run your job. It's as easy as that.